Today I want to talk about, I want to talk to you a little bit about getting your faith into focus. And you'll turn right there with Hebrews, the book of Hebrews chapter 11. Quickly, Hebrews chapter 11. If you have your Bibles, and now I'm going to read it to you this morning. A powerful chapter on the, on the theme of, uh, Hebrews 11 is all about faith. Uh, Hebrews 11, it says, beginning with verse 1, I'm just going to read the first three verses. <coughs> I, I really wanted to read the whole chapter, but... But I'll leave that up to you. Listen, later on when you have time, read that whole chapter of Hebrews 11. It's powerful. It declares examples of faith and everything that, that faith has to do with the, the believer and even in Scripture. It says now, Hebrews 11, chapter, uh, chapter 11, verse 1. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it the elders obtained a good testimony. By faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that the things which are seen are not made of the things which are visible. We have been talking about focus, and I want to talk about this morning, getting your faith into focus. Getting your faith into focus. Focus is important because it's in our nature to lose focus in, in our life. It's in our nature to, to, to lose our way, to kind of get things in our life get out of focus. A lot of you parents deal with that with your teenagers, with your kids, and you tell them, you know, hey, you need to focus on your education. You need to focus on the things that are important because there's a lot of things in this world that throw us off focus easily. Uh, we get off, off course in our life. It's easy to, even in your job and in your career as you're working, you can get loose focus simply by relationships with other people. You get loose focus uh, simply by entertainment. There, there, are other, there are a lot of things in our life that can cause us to lose focus. It's in our nature to do that. We're constantly being bombarded with things in life that can pull, even on the priorities, the things that are more important to us, the things that are most important. If I were to ask you today, what's most important to you? You would say, oh, my kids. And, my, my, my husband, my wife, my family, that's the most important thing, providing. Uh, but there, sadly, there's so many people who lose focus, even on their own children and their family. They lose focus. Uh, people find themselves in, in even relationships outside their marriage and adulterous relationships because they've lost focus on the most important thing. And it's easy. And it's, these are things that are that people fall into because our nature pulls us into those things. That's why it's important as Christians. We're always fixing our focus. We're always making sure we're we're, we're supposed to we're we're, at, we're we're in the place we're supposed to be in in our life with our family and especially number one with God. So we're surrounded with distractions. Even the good things in life can become distractions if they're not put into proper focus. Good things can become distractions. Good things can throw us out of focus if they're not put in proper focus. The ability to focus is the foundation of accomplishing everything that God has called you to do in your life. Success rises and falls on our ability to stay focused. If you're gonna graduate from school, young people, teenagers, you have to stay focused on school. Uh, so many people lose their focus when they're young because you, as a teenager you think, you know, <clears throat> it's, it's sometimes you get wrapped up in, in the things that are meaningless. We as adults at 41 years old, you know, we're older, we, 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 we didn't value, we were like, you know, we didn't value the education when we were in high school, middle school, we, we thought, yeah, it's no big deal. But when you get a little older and you get out and you get a job and people start asking, what well, do you have your diploma and do you have your college degree? And, what? and you start looking for a job. Have you ever looked for a job? Come on, adults, you look for a job and you saw all the qualifications. Have you ever looked at the qualifications and realized how unqualified you were? Come on. And then you see all this stuff and you, you see a degree that you, you, you really wanted to get when you were younger and you go, man, if I would have just got that degree, if I would have just stayed focused, if I would have just stayed in school, you kick yourself and, and you go, man, and you see other people making the money that you knew you could have made if you would have what? Stay focused. And so you tell your children, stay focused. Focus on your education. And, and your girl comes back, he's so cute, mama, and I love him. Uh-huh. 
He looked at her and said, baby, he ain't that cute. First of all, number one, he, he, he's buck toothed and cross-eyed. <laughs> ain't nothing cute about that boy. <laughs> number two, stay focused. Why? Because you understand, we understand as adults, that one small mistake in your life, one, one thing that you get involved in can throw your whole life off course. You know, put you in a place you never intended to be. Come on, all the adults say amen. All the teenagers bow your head and say, I got here at home all the time, I hear in church now. That's right. <clears throat> Anyone can start something, but the question is, can you stay focused enough to finish? Can you stay focused even in the midst of discouragement when discouragement comes? A person who can stay focused is a person who can succeed in anything in their life. I think that there are two basic types of people in church. The two things, basic types of people in church are complainers and they're worshipers. Which one are you? Two types of complainers. A complainer always finds something to complain about. They always lose focus on the main thing. What are we here for? We're here to what? Worship God, right? But complainers lose focus and we start complaining instead of looking at God and why we're here in church. We start looking at all the things that we think are what we think they should be. And so we lose focus and we begin to complain. And then there are worshipers. Worship uh, can always find, a, a worshiper can always find something to praise God about. But a complainer always finds something to complain about. That's the difference. A complainer always finds something to complain about, but the worshiper always finds something to worship about. Even, now we're talking about even in your personal lives, a complainer will complain about everything. Well, you know, that job, you know, oh, I'm not making enough money, and, and my boss, and, oh, I, but a, when you, that's a complainer. But you put a worshiper in that same position, and they'll say, oh, I thank God that I even have a job. Hello? I thank God that I even make this much money. Man, I thank God that, that I even made it this far. Praise the Lord. Because a lot of people aren't working, but I worship. I thank the Lord because I have a job. Thank you, Jesus, for the job. It may not be exactly what I want it to be, but I thank you, God, that I have one. You see, that's a worshiper. They worship and they come. Why? Because a worshipers are focused. Complainers easily lose focus. The difference between them is that where they place their focus. Focus is defined as the central point of attraction or attention or activity that you give to. It's what you give your attraction to, what you give your attention to. It's where you put your activity. It's, it's not seen with the natural eye. It's, it's really focusing is seen many times with the spiritual eye. It takes the eye of faith to truly focus on the things of God. God does not reward doubt and unbelief. God rewards faith. Why? Are you with me? Well, it's by faith that we please God. That's why you have to keep your faith focused. And that's what we're talking about this morning. Keeping your faith focused. Because when your faith loses focus, your view of God gets blurred. When your faith loses focus, your view of God gets blurred. You start to question God. Is there any God and why isn't God talking to me and why isn't this and you, your view of God gets blurred and, and you you when, when your faith is out of focus you won't, you won't see God the way he should be in your life when your faith is out of focus when, when other things in your life get more focused than your get, when, when other things in your life get more focused than your relationship with God and everything else that comes along with that relationship with God the, those things begin to take the place that God should have in your life. And so now all these other things are getting focused. And instead of God being first, because you're focused on all the things, these things get, get placed in front of God. And slowly, by little by little, God gets lower and lower in the importance in the total goal of your life. And then by the time you know it, God's the last thing you think about in your relationship with God and everything that comes along. But Pastor, I pray at home. But Pastor, I do this at home. <clears throat> but Pastor, I do that. Uh, that's all fine and dandy. But, but where is God in your life? See, when God is focused on, and when God is your focus and your foundation, remember we put God on top. Seek ye first the kingdom of God, and all these things shall be added. Focus 
And let's reword that. Seek ye first. What does the word seek mean? Right? Focus. Look. Seek. Put God in your focus. Focus on God first. And then all of these things will be added. Because listen, when your faith is out of focus, you look at the things first instead of God. Let me explain a little bit about faith this morning since we're talking about <coughs> keeping our faith focused. The Bible says that God has given everyone a measure of faith. That means that there's not one person living that does not have faith. Everyone has faith. Even an atheist has faith. They don't realize there's, they have faith. Now, faith defined, we're not talking about the God kind of faith, but there's a faith in everyone's life. And even an atheist that they don't even realize. Every day, they go to bed with the faith, believing that they're going to wake up in the morning, right? That's a, that's a belief. That's a belief system. Faith is a belief system. Even atheists have it. It takes faith to believe there's not a God. As a matter of fact, it takes more faith to believe there's not a God than faith to believe there is a God. Hello? I think I told you this story a few weeks ago. I was talking to, to an atheist and we were talking about creation. And he said, oh, I believe in evolution. I believe in, you know, this. And, and then we I talked about, I believe God created. I believe in the creation. I believe that God created the world. God created man. And he looked at me and said, man, you're, he goes, that's crazy. That's crazy. He cussed at me. He said, you mean you're one of those bleeding, bleeding people that, 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 that believe that there was a man, a God, someone created the earth and created man? That's crazy. Man, you're, you're blankety, blank, green. And I looked at him and I said, I said, yeah, I'm one of those. And I go, but you know what's even crazier? It's even crazier that you believe that we came from a monkey. That a monkey woo, 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 eventually just woo, woo, turned into a man. So what sounds crazier? That we were made by a loving, the hands of a loving God? Or that you came from a smelly, a filthy beast and you turned into a monkey? <clears throat> That's crazier than believing that there's a God. It takes more faith to believe in evolution than this to believe in God. I said, and if we come from monkeys, why aren't monkeys still evolving into men? I haven't seen a monkey at the zoo all of a sudden just get up, put a pair of pants on and say, okay, I can work here at the zoo. <laughs> it's crazy. So faith is, is a belief system. The Bible says, <clears throat> now faith is a substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Y'all forgive my voice this morning. I've been a little hoarse. Faith is substance. That word substance is a Hebrew word. It's actually the word hypostasis. The word substance there is translated actually from the Greek word hypostasis. Hypostasis means support system. Now watch this. So in other words, when you read that, it says faith is a substance. Substance means hypostasis. Hypostasis means support system. So watch. Faith is the support system of, of everything, the things that are hoped for, the things that are not seen. So faith is a support system. You know, the greatness and the power of faith is that once you have faith, your faith becomes the support system of your life. And when your faith is out of focus, you don't, you're left without a support system. Are you hearing me this morning? <clears throat> Everything you do and hope to do in your life is supported by your faith. As a Christian, you do nothing without faith. Nothing. Even, even a non-Christian, that means that there's no limit to what you can accomplish and hope in, in your life because your faith is supporting you in it when you have faith. When you have faith, your faith is supporting you in it. Did you notice the difference when you became a Christian, when you started to believe and have a faith? Did you notice the difference when you had faith versus you didn't have? When you didn't have faith, you were just like, man, I hope everything out. You know, I just I hope you didn't have anything supporting that belief. But when you all of a sudden 
you come into faith, you, you say things like, you know what? I know God has this worked out for me. I know God is going to make a way. And I know, I know God, all of a sudden your language changes, right? You're, you're supported because you're supported. Your dreams, your visions, your hopes, your life is supported by something greater than just your human instincts. People with faith don't need it. The fact is, see, people with faith don't need anyone else to pat them on the back. Their faith is encouraging them. Their faith, really a Christian? If you're really a Christian, you don't need anybody to pat you on your back. You're going to be all right. Girl. I'm praying for you. You know what? We, oh, we all need, I know we need, what do you mean, Pastor? What do you mean, Pastor? Really, you don't. Why? Because faith is enough. The Bible says when everything, came, the Bible says King David got to a point when his own people turned against him. And what did the Bible say? The Bible says that David, King David encouraged himself in the Lord. He got to a place in his life where he encouraged himself. He looked at himself and said, you can do it, David. He encouraged him. Why? Because sometimes as a Christian, you have to have the ability to encourage yourself. Why? Because faith, your faith is supporting you. People with faith don't need cheerleaders because faith cheers for them. Your faith is your support. That's why, that's why your faith needs, your faith needs to be focused in your life. Your faith being focused is important. Are y'all with me this morning? Y'all understand what I'm telling you? Let me show you this. See, the devil, we have to realize in our life that the devil. The devil's not after your car. Are you hearing me? The devil's not after your house. The devil's not after your money. The devil's not after your marriage. The devil's not after your ministry. The devil's not after your children. Oh, he goes after those things, but that's not his ultimate goal. The devil is after your faith. Those things that the devil attacks are for, he attacks those things for one purpose, to steal your faith. Yeah. Look at the story of Job. God said, have you considered my servant Job? He worships me. He does this. He, he's perfect. He, he, he's an upright man. And God said, or the devil said, well, look what everything you did. Well, take that hand to protect you. Let me attack everything, every blessing in his life. Then we'll see if he'll worship me. Then we'll see the Bible says that God, that, that the devil attacked everything. He took, his, he took his money, his house, killed his children. All he left, the devil knew what he, to leave him with. He left him with his naggy wife. And the Bible says his wife nagged him and said, Why don't you just look at you, Job? <coughs> You're going through all this and still believing in God? Why don't you curse God and die? Boy, that's a tough wife, huh? Think about it, I don't have a wife like that. Praise the Lord. You might, but I don't. You said, why don't you just curse God and die? And Job looked at her and said, Naked I came and naked I shall go. Blessed be the name of the Lord. See, he didn't, he didn't have his value. Wasn't in what he had. His value wasn't in the house. It wasn't in the car. His faith wasn't in those things. His faith was focused on God. Oh my God, let me ask you a question. Is your faith focused on God? Or is your faith focused on stuff? Honey, if you lost some stuff, lift your hand and say, I lost stuff. Come on. Oh, hallelujah. You lost some stuff, huh? You lost some relationships. You lost some people? Lift your hand. You lost some people. Come on. And let's tell the truth. How many divorces can you hear and say, I lost, I've lost a husband and a wife? You lift your finger and say, It's me. I'm just checking the weather. Hello? What? Life happens. But no matter what you lose in your life, if you're focused on God, whoo, God will give you a better car. God will give you a better house. God will give you a better money. I'm even going to say this. You might get mad at me, but God will give you a better husband. Praise the Lord. God ain't going to lie. Are y'all with me? Listen. Is your faith focused on on God or is it focused on your stuff? See, because the only reason the devil is going after your stuff is to get you to take your eyes off of God and get so discouraged over your stuff that you begin to shake your fist at God and say, why did you do to me this God? Why did you do this to me, God? Because he's after your faith. 
It's your faith. Here's what you got to understand. It's your faith. Remember, faith is a substance. It's the hypostasis. It's the support system. It's your faith that supports your money. Not your money that supports your faith. It's your faith that supports your house. Your faith supports your car. Your faith supports your marriage. Your faith supports your children. Your faith supports that. Why? Because without faith, it's impossible to please God. Without faith, it's impossible to gain these things in your life. Why? Because you're putting your faith first. And you understand it's because of my faith that I'm blessed. You're not with me this morning. I'm sick. I'm still preaching. I'm trying. Watch this. When your faith is focused, your marriage is focused. When your faith is out of focus, your marriage is out of focus. Husbands, men, listen. When your faith is focused, your marriage is focused. When you're, when you're focused on God, you can be focused on your spouse and not worried about what other uh, any other skirt that walks by. Or any other tight pants. How you are you with me this morning? Why? Because I'm focused on God. Women, when you're when you are focused, when your faith is focused, you're, you're, you're focused on your husband. Watch this. Women, if your faith is, if your faith is focused on God, that means when, when your husband sees God, he sees you. Women, when your faith is focused on God, men, when your faith is focused on God, I mean, when your wife sees God, she sees you. Why? Because you line up with the same direction that she's going with God. Y'all are lined up with this. Y'all are focused. Hello? Y'all are focused. <clears throat> that doesn't mean that you're not going to have trouble in your marriage. That, that means that when a storm comes, to your marriage, it's your unified faith that gets you through the storm. That's why when your faith is focused, when your faith is focused, watch this, your money is focused. <laughs> That's why people with little faith don't tithe. People who have little faith aren't tithers. It's the people with faith that are tithers. If you really want to know if you if, if, if you really want to know if you have faith, check your tithing record. It'll tell you. People who have faith tithe because they understand that faith is the currency of God, not money. Faith is more important than money. Faith will get you money. Faith will get you success. Faith will get you closer to God. Are you hearing me? Listen, if you really want God to begin to bless you, Put your faith in a focus and start tithing faithfully. The Bible says he'll supply all of your needs according to his riches in heaven. When you have your faith focused, you understand that your supply is from God, from God's resources and not your own. Focus your faith on God and God will focus his supply on you. Somebody say amen. My God, I'm preaching. I don't know if you're receiving it, but I'm preaching it. <coughs> I like to hunt. I mean, like to hunt. I like I like going hunting. I mean, I, but I like going hunting. And, and I, <clears throat> when I go hunting, every every year before it gets deer season, where's my hunting buddy? Rudy he ain't here uh, today. Rudy, my hunting buddy. Now, I learned this. When I go hunting, I gotta take my rifle in. I gotta get it reset. I gotta get my scope focused. Right. I gotta get that that crosshair and make sure that where I put that. Those crosshairs, if I put it on that deer that I want to shoot, I got to make sure that that thing is focused where it needs to be, that it's set because if it's out of focus, I'll miss what I'm aiming for. I've been there. Although we all have that deer hunting story, right? That if you have that crosshair, you say, man, I had it right on him. And then all you did, you pulled, you pulled to the left, you pulled, man, I pulled, I got that hair, I got my rifle set to a hair trigger. So I got to put my rifle, I just tap that thing, boom, I'm not pulling to the left. But, and I know if I put that rifle, that, that crosshairs on that, that deer, whatever I put it on, it's going to hit it. But if I could be the best shot, I could be the best shot in the world. But if my, 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 my skull is not focused, 
I'll miss what I'm aiming for. <clears throat> the same principle applies to your faith. When your faith is not focused, you will miss what God has for you every time. When your faith is not focused, you'll miss. Okay, Pastor, why isn't God doing this in my life? Why not? I'm asking, is your faith focused? Are you focused on your faith or are you focused on other things? That's what I want to ask you. And see, that's why the devil's after your faith. Because he's, he's trying to make you miss what God is destined for your life. Pastor, I got saved June 23rd, 1991. I gave my heart to the Lord. June 23rd, 1991. I, I, I surrendered my heart to Jesus. <clears throat> I'm going to tell you right now. I had, since that time, I, I'm going to tell you what. I was, I was focused, I knew, I was just running toward God. I, I, I can't even say I knew what I was doing, I knew where I was going. All I knew is that I was going after God. And I'm like, there were so many things that got in, got in the way. So many things that could have thrown me off course. So many things that could have got in the way. I, didn't get, I, I, was, I was 19 when I gave my heart to Jesus. 19. Or 18. I was 18 when I got saved. 18 when I got saved. 18. I, I, my party years, I was serving Jesus. Are you hearing me? I got saved. Now I still have friends. I still have Hey, I still have people pulling me left and right, wanting me to go do this. Go. And people who got saved around the same time I did, they, they didn't stay saved too long. Why? Because eventually some of them got off track and went to the other. But I stayed focused. I went after God. Everybody else was getting married and moving on. And, and people were, 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 were even getting, were, 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 were having uh, children out of wedlock and just getting somebody pregnant and moving on. But I stayed focused. Are you hearing me? I stayed focused on God. I kept moving toward God. And they were, and then people around me, oh, he ain't gonna be one of the church. Oh, he ain't gonna serve this model. He ain't gonna serve God long. Man, we'll see. He'll be saved this week, the last two weeks. Y'all don't, don't know. They didn't doubt it. But I stayed focused on God. I went to Bible college. I remember when I signed up to go to Bible college, people around me were like, oh, he's just going out of motion, out of emotion. He ain't gonna last. He ain't really called. I stayed focused on God. Here I come a year later out of Bible school and I start preaching my first sermon. They go, whoa, this guy. Man, work. the anointing shows up when I start preaching. People are like, Oh, I always knew the same people who doubted me say, Oh, I always knew he was called to be the Lord. No, you didn't. I just stay focused for you. I just ignore the haters. Just stay focused. Honey, I've been doing this thing long enough to tell you if you stay focused on God, God will get you where He wants you. He'll bless you above what you even thought you can be blessed with. Hallelujah. Are y'all with me? My wife, everybody, my mom, everybody, we ain't gonna get married. Hey, I need to hurry up and get married. And my mom, my mom would tell me, I'm praying for a wife. I said, keep praying, I'm focused. <laughs> Women will come along and, hi, Pastor, Ooh. hey, Pastor, well, he, sure would, he sure would make a, a good stepdaddy. <laughs> get out the way, girl, I'm focused. <laughs> I want no five kids, I'm not focused. <laughs> Yeah, get out of the way. Pretty ones too. Sorry, baby. Pretty ones come along. I'm like, uh-uh. 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 Sometimes I look, ooh, oh. No, I can't have my moment. Uh-uh. Come on, get with you real. Uh-uh. I stay focused. And when you stay focused, everything you need will fall into the focus of your life. It'll come in, it, 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 won't, it won't come into your life blurred. It'll come in. When I saw my wife, she was clear. I, I said, Bzzz. check my scope. Kill shot. Woo! I'm taking her home, honey. Go in the act test. She's going home. <laughs> I hear her from a thousand yards. Boom. Why? Because I was focused on God. And when I was focused on God, she walked into my focus. When your faith is focused, everything you need will walk into your focus. You won't need to refocus your life to fit. If you have to refocus your life, refocus your relationship with God, refocus some things to fit something in, honey, it just don't fit. You 
can't put a square peg into a round hole, it ain't gonna work. But a lot of you start pulling out knives, start edging out the specs. You'll fit. God will change him. And I said, God, that ain't going for you, girl. God will change him. You pull out your knife, start shaving him on the side. I'll change him. I'll, change. I'll make him fit. I'll make him fit. Oh, honey, he ain't going to fit. It don't fit. It don't fit. Turn around to the person next to you. It don't fit. It don't fit. <laughs> Hello, it don't fit. You know, I used to be fatter than I am now. And I knew when clothes didn't fit. Let me tell all you fat people something. I'm fat, all right? Let me tell all y'all with me. Don't get offended. If it don't fit, honey, don't wear it. You know what's the real test that it fits? Sit down because you spread when you sit. Oh, y'all ain't hearing me. It fits when I'm standing up, but I, I wore shirts before that I had to stand up for it to fit. I couldn't sit down. I stand up the whole time. <laughs> y'all laugh. Everybody's gonna wave at me, you know what I'm talking about. I'll say, I hear you, Pastor. I will come on Sunday morning until I tell you I can't sit down today. And when I would go out to eat, I, I, I'll meet you at the restaurant, I'll bring you an extra shirt, take it off. Woo! Oh, I sit down, praise the Lord. Put me a stretchy shirt on. Oh, you changed? Yeah, that shirt was sweaty. No, it wasn't. If I sat down, you wouldn't get hit in the eye. I would, your focus would have got hit by my button. I got thrown off track, praise the Lord. Y'all know me. Stay focused. There you go. <coughs> Focus, my God. If it doesn't fit your focus, it doesn't fit your life. If it doesn't fit, it doesn't, listen, it doesn't take much for someone to miss God. All the devil has to do is to get you to put your focus on something else. If he can shift your focus, he can make you miss God for your life. He doesn't have to, even, listen, the devil doesn't have to even get you to fall to throw you off course. A lot of times we think the devil's trying to get you to fall into sin. Let me, let me tell you something, the devil ain't dumb. You don't have to fall into sin to get thrown off focus. You can focus on something that's good that's not sin, but it doesn't fit. You hear me? It doesn't fit. It's not the right time. It's not the right thing. It may not be sin, but it's not God's will. And if it's not God's will, it becomes sin to you because it's not on your course. It's not on your focus. Are y'all with me? He doesn't have to make you fall. All he has to do is make you go get uh, throw you off course. It doesn't take much. If he can just get you to take your eyes off of God and put your eyes on the storm, Peter, then he can get you to take your focus off the vision and put your focus on the struggle. And you're like Peter when Jesus says, come walk into me on the water. Peter, come. Peter starts walking on the water. But as soon as he takes, the Bible says <coughs> that when he took his eyes off of Jesus and saw the waves, he began to see. Why? Because he put his focus on the wrong thing. But if you keep your eyes off of, on Jesus, if you keep your focus on God, you can walk through any storm in your life. Okay, come on, Fox. Okay, fix, fix your focus. Everybody shout, fix your focus. Fix your focus. Watch. Judge your focus. See, faith is internal strength. You don't judge a person's level of faith. Hold it, give me one second. Watch. You don't judge a person's level of faith by their quality of life. Don't judge a person's faith by the quality of life. Sometimes you look at people's life and go, oh, look at the quality of their life. Look what they have. Look what they drive. Look where they live. Their quality of life is good. They look like they're who they must have a lot of faith. Just because a person, a Christian, has a good quality of life doesn't mean the faith is big. You don't, truck, you don't judge a person's level of faith by their quality of life. You judge it by the level of maturity in what they go through. You judge a person's faith on how they deal with the trials and the storms of their life. Do they fall apart when things begin to fall apart? Or do they stand focused on their faith? And can they hold on to God when everything else is crashing around them? That's how, you, that's how you measure the level of faith. Are you, 
You know anybody like that who, who went through hell and high water and they're still holding on to it? When I think of person, I think about Sister Sylvia Benares sitting on, on that front chair right there. Went through hell and high water and still faces some stuff, but she's still in church, honey. She still lifts her hand and says, God, thank you, Jesus. Are you here? That's faith. That's faith. Everybody say, that's faith. Focus faith is about growing your faith to a place of stability. A faith that's focused is stable. <clears throat> that's when you know your faith is focused. When you can be stable and focused in your faith and faith commitments no matter what's taking place in your life. A person who has focused faith has a focused life. A person who has a focused life means I know where I'm going. A focused faith means I know what God's called me to be. Unfocused, unfocused Christians are unstable Christians. Christians who their faith is in focus, they're unfocused, they're unstable. All right? They're unstable. You can always tell an unstable Christian. You can always tell an unstable. You can look at them and say, oh, they're not stable. Why? Because they meander. They want their wanderers. They're focused. I don't know if God, you're always questioning God because you're unstable. People who are not faith focused are moved by negative circumstances. I'm teaching all this more. I know I'm teaching, but what? Are you learning anything? People who are, who are focused in their faith are not moved by circumstances because they understand that trials are not destroying you. They're actually growing you. See? When you're focused in your faith, you understand that the trials of your life, they're not destroying you. They're growing you. They're making you stronger. I'm stronger today because of all the hell I've been through in my life. People sometimes say, gosh, I don't see how you go, I don't see how you deal with everything you deal with, huh? You ain't been where I've been, honey. And it's funny. It's funny, people come in this church, people come, I, 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 I've been around for a long time, people come in, they, they see me pastor, they see me do something, and they think they can do what I do. Oh, I can do that. Oh, and they go off and try to start their own church. I'm like, go ahead, honey. You can, you can try to be me and try to be him and try to be that pastor, but um, you, you haven't been through where I've been through, so don't tell me you can do what I can do. Hello? Because it's not about me. It's about my focus on him. You haven't stayed focused long enough on his life. So that's why you should never envy what somebody else is blessed with because you don't know what they've been through to get there. You hear me? Don't ever look at somebody and say, oh man, I wish I had a car like them, a, a truck like a house like that. You don't know what they've been through. You. you don't know the areas in their life that they have to stay focused in. Things they have to say no to in order to get where they are. You haven't been through where they've been through. You don't deserve what they, where they are. You are where you are because you deserve to be where you are. And if you're in a bad place, you gotta, don't look at somebody else's life and, and desire their, look at your life and fix your own Y'all ain't with me. Fix your focus. And God will get you to a greater place in your life. <clears throat> James chapter 1 verse 2 says, My brother, count it all joy when you face various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith. Remember, trials don't, aren't there to destroy you. They're there to grow you. Watch. Knowing that the testing of your faith produces, the word produces means it grows, produces patience, and let patience have its perfect work, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. When your faith is focused and your faith is producing in your life, you will lack nothing. Perfect and complete means mature. You will get to a place where you're lacking nothing. Faith is grown in the testing seasons of your life. Real faith is grown in the testing times of your life, in the storms, in the tough times, in the times you're questioning God. Is God, are you with me? God, are you? Are you with me through this? Look at every person. Look at the, look at the great prophets in the Bible. They're like Moses. Moses standing at the Red Sea with. After seeing every miracle God had done, he's standing there. <clears throat> and he looks at God and says, God, this Red Sea, 
Now what? And God says, don't cry out to me. Every, all the faith you need, I put in you. Now stretch out your staff. Stretch your faith over this, this, this boundary. Stretch your faith over this limitation. Stretch your faith over this impossible area in your life. And watch me move the impossible through your faith. Faith is the foundation of every doctrine in the Bible. We're just, we're saved by faith. We're justified by faith. We're sanctified by faith. We walk by faith. We're healed by faith. All these things are by faith. We're forgiven and, and forgive others by faith. We get wisdom and understanding by faith. We overcome sin by faith. We love ourselves and others by faith. Every We do everything in by faith in God and His Word. The spirit of faith is not passive. The spirit of faith declares, dares to believe God. The spirit of faith doesn't consider the circumstance. It considers the source, which is God. The spirit of faith always obeys. The spirit of faith is the spirit of victory. Oh my God, church. It's time to focus your faith. If, you, if your faith is unfocused, focus it. If you're struggling in your relationship with God, I'll tell you the problem right now. Your faith isn't focused. You're not focusing on God. You're not focusing on God. You're looking at your, like, oh, there's God. God, Father, you see God. You see all the things you like going wrong. And, this, and then I got a problem here. And I got a problem there. You're, you're worried about all these things. And, but you're losing focus of God. You're losing. You're, you're looking. I have this need and that need and that need and this need. But God, and God's over here saying, I shall supply all your needs according to your riches and glory. But seek me first. All these things I should be at. But instead of seeking Him, you're looking at what the need in your life. Are you here? Oh God, I'm dealing with this sickness and I don't know what to do. And God saying, By my stripes, you are healed. Just focus on me. Focus on me. And I have healing in my hands. <laughs> See, what do you need? Everything you need. Everything you need is focused on that cross right there. Everything, everything, everything. Focus on what Jesus did. Focus on who he is. And he'll get you what you need. Come on, stand up with me this morning.